The heart of an introvert is rarely seen and often misunderstood. When you are brave enough to accept yourself and honor your boundaries, regardless of another person's ability to accept them, it takes a silent strength that not everyone is able to acknowledge or see. It often always goes unnoticed. Because in a toxic and an unaware world, we praise the performer for their ability to validate their own existence by the presence of others. We congratulate a person's network by the quantity instead of the quality because the societal machine is run by how many people that are actually engaging with, not the quality of people that are existing in. And the conversation of whether a person is an introvert or an extrovert is always processed in my mind as a population of people living on land and a population living in water. This is just basically how I describe it in my mind and the experiences that I've had as existing as an introvert, but also putting myself out there and having jobs and being in schools and trying to make sure that I'm keeping myself to myself so that I can nurture the best parts of me without conforming and being someone that I truly am not just to be accepted. So in this video, I'll be going back and forth to the above the surface and underwater as a correlation just so I can better make my points. But when I am describing it, I hope you understand that I'm not basically defining the situation as just that. I'm just using it as a tool to better tell the story. Hopefully what I share today will be of service to you in any way. So let's get started. The extroverts are on the surface, on land. There's a level of noise that exists on the surface that brings comfort or recharge to people who find home there. There's this dance or the silent lots of polite conversation, depending on your culture, relationship building, depending on your intentions, and overall free expression, where all of those meet and maybe sometimes clash or make love or wars. And there's this chaos and harmony that exists on the surface that you either love, you don't, or can tolerate better than others. I truly believe that extroverts are needed in the world. They are able to handle things, people, and settings that most people are not equipped to. But often the world has given extroverts the authority to define all of us. They get to write the stories that define what happens on the surface and what they perceive to be going on underneath simply because they are more implied to talk about it. And because the noise is so common, we've allowed them to create the sound of the introvert and be loud and wrong about it, literally. In most settings like networking events, at work or at school, it feels like being an introvert is the disease. And a person can just prescribe a fake smile and a fake personality to make everyone else feel comfortable. But who has a right to tell us that we are not enough? When most of us hear this, we begin to mask and perform and put on this guard and it just becomes heavier and heavier as time goes on. I was just not allowed to rest in my truth because I put so many other people's feelings over my own. And it made me even more distant. I couldn't stand myself because I didn't understand why I was so different. I couldn't stand the people who just wanted to change me to make themselves feel better. And I think my efforts in this episode is just to catch an introvert at the right time and allow them to see that they are enough and the things that bring you comfort should be respected just as much as an extrovert's. And in this world, not every space that we will have to show up in will be right for us, but that's why boundaries are important, so we can stand firm in who we are, no matter where we are. I feel like COVID really did something to people. It's like a mass of people woke up and they were like, you know what? I'm just at a point where I don't have to take this shit anymore. I'm an introvert, and I am also an intricate part of this world. So no, I don't need to go to the office to do my job. Yes, you can send this in, in an email, and I can work from home, and I can be productive, and I don't have to perform this corporate relationship fake personality style just to get you to keep me around. Because at the end of the day, you don't really care about me. 
it's like when you're an introvert and you're just confident in who you are you reach a point where you're like no i don't have to fill every space with the sound of my presence i want the introverts to repeat after me my presence even in its silence is still valuable because to be fair there's no one way that is better than the other there is no ways of expressing yourself whether you are an introvert or extrovert that is easily digestible than the other so both deserve grace and the room to exist authentically so that we can learn from one another i remember being younger and going to events with people that i knew and they wanted to be able to walk around and see all of the people that they knew they felt like they needed other people's eyes to feel sane and after a while i just was like uh I don't need that validation when I go to places. I just want to go, eat my turkey leg, and people watch. I don't necessarily have to walk around and be a parade to validate my existence. I don't want to necessarily wave and say hello to every person that I know when I go to a place. That's just not how I am. I don't think that's realistic. And maybe it's funny acting. But honestly, if I go to a place and there's maybe 30 people that I know there, it's not natural for me to go to every single one and say, hello, hello, hello. Like, unless I'm getting paid or unless the event is mine, of course I would have to like definitely make my presence known and thank them for coming and of course i have a relationship with them so i want to hear about them and what's going on with them but if we are at a game where there's fifty thousand people right we're at a basketball game there's fifty thousand people there why do i have to because i know you're there see you like we experience the game i'll send you a text hey what's up if you're really close to me we can meet but like i'm not gonna do that to every 50 people that i may know that could be there like i know that sounds insane but it's if you look back and if you remember yourself you used, used to do that that's kind of what i'm talking about like have you ever asked yourself like why did i do that like why was that the cool thing to do you know what I'm saying? Like, anyway. When you're an introvert, it does feel like we find our power in the depths and the vastness of a quiet space that very few travel to, like deep sea space. When we spend long periods of time on the surface, much like a fish out of water, it's so uncomfortable. The laws of the surface hardly suffice for us. Not to convert anyone into introvertism, if that is even a word, but to a person that has lived on both sides. I had an era where I was alone most of the time, so there was a part of me that craved a sisterhood or a community, assuming that my good intentions would deliver good results. And I think me being naive and being open to so many different personalities without boundaries or real discernment with what to do with certain personality styles shook the foundation of my innocence. And when it came to people, I was just completely confused, but also fascinated. I have been completely intrigued by the perception of others because perception really creates your reality. It's in so many small and finite parts of a person that really trickle into their reality that I'm like, hmm, I started to be a little bit more intentional about ways that I showed up and the things that I said out of my mouth and just what I participated in. But anyways, this openness without boundaries drained me. I was like, I don't really like any of you. I'm, I'm done pretending like I can accept mean girl, lost soul, destructive behavioral shit. Because if you're bored at a certain point in your time, you just have a little bit more time to do a lot of negative and nasty things. And I can say this proudly or just realistically because I was once a girl with nothing to do and now that I actually have a focus or when I finally found what that is truly for me I had no time to waste and a lot of what kept me going was preserving my energy conversationally and intellectually I had to see where I played my own part and the responsibilities that I had with allowing so much into my life 
that led me to fatigue. I really sat down and self-actualized. I made a video about it. I asked, who am I? What are my principles? What do I stand for? And once I defined what that was for me, I completely left Houston. And I knew I could never return. <laughs> when you grow up in a city that is deep-rooted in a specific culture, sometimes the most toxic things and ways of thinking have desensitized you into believing that that's how it is everywhere you go. Yes, it is very American, and I'm fully aware of how entitled and completely ignorant we as Americans can be as a whole, but in the South, it's like that times 10 thou wow. For real. And thankfully, that is not the case. It was being an introvert that allowed me to see myself so thoroughly that now at this age, where I'm almost 30, there is no one on earth that can know or define me more than I can myself. There's also a very low tolerance for anything that is outside of my boundaries. I just reached a point where my principles were worth fighting for. And I didn't need anyone to come into my life and convince me to feel a certain way. I wasn't so easily swayed because I had already defined what my principles were. With room that I give people to be their authentic self, I have to give myself room enough to say, even though I give you the space to exist in who you are, it doesn't mean that I have to mirror you or agree with you just to make each other comfortable. The world is so huge. And I have to expand my mind and expand just my dialogue to be able to accept an entire world, not just the small communities that I used to exist in and grow up in. Because at the end of the day, if I'm standing for nothing, I'm falling for any and everything. I also think that there's a misconception that introverts fear people or that we are how we are because of a certain fear. That's also one of those things that society, again, lets the extroverts say to make themselves feel better. And it's not even because it's true. I literally think it's because we don't really feel like going back and forth with you about something that you just cannot conceptualize. And because we know how much they love to talk, we just kind of just let them do that you know, but to stand firm in your roots and to completely take yourself outside of the performance aspect of existing. We have just decided to make peace with the fact that some people will not understand us. And also we don't have anything to prove to people. And if your solitude is genuinely a place where you find peace, you're already ahead of the game. Because in reality, there's people that have to do so much work just to sit in the silence of their own presence that if we can do that and find home there, we're kind of saying we've done the work to accept ourselves. We can look in the mirror and actually be okay if it is just us. Because in our inner world, we've found home. And so many people look outside of themselves to feel home, to feel seen, to feel accepted. And I think in that aspect, that's what we have a lot to teach others. We have few friends because we actually value connection. We value it enough to connect intentionally. We understand that a person can be understanding, open and empathetic, fair, level-headed, but people as a whole and with all of the different personalities can be irate judgmental, fearful, and we just have to accept that, you know, maybe everything is not for everyone, so we choose to keep ourselves to a select few, not because we want to keep ourselves in a box, but because we like to intentionally nurture and bring quality to what we actually already have. Even as someone that wants to be an actress, I want to be able to have more of a network of people that are performers, actors, and that are doing the same things, but I want it to be genuine, real, creative artists, storytellers that are so real that I am able to find them and see the realness of them, and then we come together and build a relationship, not because, well, I need to use you one day, so I want to try to be your friend, I want to have your number and have your contact, it's just like... I don't know, maybe I'm asking for too much. Maybe my expectations are too high, but um, 
that's just how I see it. Also, sometimes I believe that the world assumes that being an introvert doesn't make you a good leader. Or because we are introverts, we are not able to make as much as an impact. But in my research, I literally googled famous introverts because I was trying to do research for this topic to find more things to say. And some of the most amazing people are introverts. And I truly feel like because of their sensitivity to certain things and because of who they are and how they operate in the world, it was that small percentage of difference that made them who they are that was able to exist in the world and bring about so much change. I think about Albert Einstein. He was probably absolutely bonkers to so many people, but his sensitivity to the world and everything that he saw is why we are able to exist in the world today. Rosa Parks. I mean, I'm pretty sure she was just at her limit and she didn't want to get to the back of the bus. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> there's going to be so many more people that because of their sensitivity and because of how they are, are able to make an impact and do something that is going to change the consciousness of our community and the way that we see things and perceive things. And if we just stop doing that to make other people feel better, there is so much so many more things that could happen that are not in the best interest of the collective and i see myself and me showing up and existing in spaces the way that i do as being that one percent to kind of bring the balance because i exist in spaces especially where i work where i am the one percent of person that i am the way that i am and i guess what they say is i'm a little bit harder to read not because I'm not open to talking to, it's just that because of the way that I look or just how I walk in, I'm very professional, that people don't know how to approach me. And until they approach me, they realize like, oh, wow, no, you, you actually do talk. You have, I'm able to build connections with people. And it's like, yeah, you know, someone asked me like, how do I walk in leadership in that way? The thing that I said was at the end of the day, there are different personality styles, but if I have a job to get done, I would hope that they would respect my consistency enough to see that I am a person present enough to lead them in the right direction or be an example that regardless of how they feel about my personality or who I am as a person, as long as I des deliver a desired result and I'm not forcing anyone to respect me, but I'm just giving people an equal level of respect that I would, would like to receive in return, I would hope that they would see me as someone as an equal, but also someone to look to for support because of how consistently I choose to show up. If I'm an introvert, I'm going to walk in that as proud as I want to be. I've tried doing the performance of being whoever they thought I needed to be, and I wasn't liked anyway. So why not exist in the fullness of whom, who I am and allow the people that are supposed to like me, like me and love me because I'm actually being who I need to be. So to my fellow introverts, I encourage you to rest in your knowing. Remain proud of your commitment to self-regulation. No matter what the jobs or the peers or the family members, misunderstand about who you are and how you show up in the world. Know that the world needs people like you to keep a balance and keep the world kind of spinning. It's our sensitivity and our awareness and our discernment that brings about change or a different perspective. Sometimes in order to maintain our authenticity, we must preserve ourselves. And introverts are just really good at that. We are not for everybody. No one 100% is. And as introverts, it is our responsibility to value ourselves enough to be ourselves, no matter how others may take it. So someone can see you as an example and knowing that's the root of who they are and say, I'm going to give myself a chance and not put on a fake smile or put on a fake performance. If your natural face is don't walk around creating fine lines just to please everyone else. I want to walk into the world rested and I can't help how my face is made. It's up until the person is speaking to me that they really see my heart, who I am, and the truth of how I communicate. Um, and sometimes it's not up to us 
who is able to see us. And sometimes no matter how hard we try, people are just not going to be able to see us. But that's not our problem. We should continue to walk in the truth of who we are and know that the right people will come and that for what we need to do into the world, it will be done by how we choose to show up. Because you were perfectly made and not to say that there's no opportunity for growth and evolution, but if you truly feel like solitude is a place that gives you peace, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you. And, and I hope this video is another hint of reassurance that you can continue to exist in your authentic self and still be worthy of love, still be worthy of promotion, still be worthy of success and adoration because you are much more than the fake smiles. I think that is all that I have today. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this with an introvert or someone that you love. Hopefully it feels good to hear that someone sees you and that you are not alone. Follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri and uh, send me a DM, send me a message or an email. I'd really appreciate that. That is all that I have and I will see you guys in my next one.